Good afternoon. Welcome to the professor here. Glad you could all make it. I have uh, no opening statement, so I'm ready to uh, take your questions. <coughs> yes, Joe. Can you give us an idea, Ken, of uh, what efforts are being expended uh, by this uh, department to aid in the embassy uh, explosions? Well, yes, I can give you uh, a fairly extensive rundown, but let me start by saying that so far we've flown uh, 17 um, uh, missions or flights um, over to uh, East Africa. Uh, we've delivered um, uh, approximately uh, uh, 400 uh, uh, military and civilian personnel to the area and um, several hundred, uh, I guess 140 short tons of equipment. Uh, so that's 17 missions uh, over 120,000 miles, and these have been from Washington, from the Middle East, and from Germany. Um, 418 passengers and 140 short tons of equipment. Let me break down what we've delivered so far. Um, uh, we moved in a, 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 a forward surgical team of 20 people, a, a combat stress control team of seven people. Uh, we moved in um, a, a two Marine Corps um, a fleet anti-terrorism security teams of about 100 people. That's about 50 people each. Uh, one of those went to uh, Nairobi and one went to Dar es Salaam. Uh, 30 Navy Seabees were moved in from Guam to assist in the recovery operations. Uh, we've also uh, uh, moved in a mortuary of for, uh, affairs team, um, an Air Force aeromedical evacuation crew of seven people a three-person critical care transport, transport crew to help bring people out in uh, medevac planes. Uh, we've moved in uh, over 200 units of blood. Uh, one of the crucial requirements was, uh, uh, was blood, and we moved that into uh, Nairobi primarily. So that gives you a flavor of what, uh, of what support the military has provided over the last, uh, last couple of days. Now, we stand ready to provide additional re re support if called upon, but as you know, there's a fairly large team there. We're, we've been supported by uh, people from several different countries, including uh, Israel, which sent a team uh, of experts uh, at finding bodies uh, in uh, bomb buildings and rubble. Uh, there are uh, uh, British and Australian security personnel helping us, uh, and South Africa supri uh, also supplied the medical evacuation support. When will the embassy personnel who lost their lives in the bombing be coming home, and how will they be transported home? Well, they will be uh, transported uh, back from Germany in a C-17 on Thursday. They will arrive at uh, Andrews Air Force Base, and there will be a ceremony presided over by President Clinton and involving uh, Secretary Cohen, Secretary Albright, and Secretary Shalala. And that is uh, scheduled to take place at 11 a.m. on Thursday morning at Andrews Air Force Base. As you know, Secretary Albright will leave and fly to Germany tomorrow and she'll uh, meet with some uh, family members and talk to people uh, in the hospitals there, and she'll come back uh, with the uh, caskets on the C-17 from Germany. Yes, Barbara. How many remains are actually coming back to Andrews? Well, uh, 12 uh, uh, people were killed in this uh, terrorist act, and I believe that uh, uh, one set of remains is uh, staying in Kenya to be buried there. And another set of remains will come back, uh, maybe it already has come back, of uh, the remains of uh, Master Sergeant uh, uh, Olds in the Air Force uh, will be buried in Florida. And I believe those remains, if they haven't been uh, sent back already, will be sent back before the other ones. And so are we going to have 10? That's my understanding right now, that there will be 10 sets of remains. There will be 10. 
there been any uh, requests and or have you considered allowing any of those uh, the other <coughs> ten to be buried at Arlington National Cemetery? I don't know the answer to that question right now. There is a precedent for it. Isn't there? The, well, uh, certainly the uh, the three um, peace negotiators in Bosnia, um, including uh, Joe Krusel, uh, were buried in, in Arlington Cemetery, uh, those who died in uh, 1995, I guess. Um, but um, I don't know what the, uh, uh, how many, if any, will be buried in Arlington. I just don't know the answer to that question. Case that all go back after Andrews, all the remains go to Dover for. My understanding is that the three, uh, well, that uh, the two, uh, uh, that the military personnel, the remains of military personnel, active duty military personnel, go to Dover, uh, and that the other sets of remains probably will not, that they will go directly to other. Um, uh, points, whether they're undertakers or funeral homes. Could I just ask you to take that question because there's been a lot of um, conflict about whether, uh, conflicting information about whether there will be criminal autopsies performed on those remains as well. Will they go to Dover? Could you just take that question? I'll take the question. Thank you. And the uniform, uh, the military people on the Arlington question, again, I think would be entitled to burial in Arlington in any event. I've said I'd take the, I'll take the Arlington question. Yes. Uh, can any uh, first blush uh, indications on uh, the background for this uh, attacks, these attacks, does it appear to be state sponsored? It appear to be. Uh, uh, have you identified the explosive involved? Um, and uh, was there any indication or forewarning of an attack on these facilities? Uh, all of those are very good questions, and um, I'm not going to answer any of them. Uh, these are the types of issues that are being considered by the FBI. They're part of an ongoing investigation. I think that um, uh, uh, frequently in cases like this, uh, the early information is turns out to be wrong or fragmentary, and I think it makes much more sense just to let the investigators do their work, and uh, when they finish, they'll report their findings. Um, what about the arrests there today by the Kenyans? There have, uh, my understanding is that, um, that local law enforcement authorities are um, questioning some people. I don't know whether they've uh, been arrested or detained for questioning. Um, that's really up for them to describe, but there has been some questioning taking place uh, uh, by local law enforcement authorities. Got a related question, if I may. Israeli television is reporting now that the explosive found at one of the sites was Semtex. Uh, has it ever been released here or determined what the explosive was at uh, the Kobar Towers in Dharan two years ago? Um, I, I'd have to go back and refresh my memory on that. My recollection is uh, uh, that that was in the report that we released in uh, 1996, but I just don't recall what we said. You can go back and look at the report, but I'll ask Colonel Bridges to look it up for you and get you the information. Mr. Bacon, uh, some of the anecdotal stuff coming out of particularly Nairobi, perhaps unfortunately, has been along the lines of where was the cavalry. Ambassador Bushnell has referred to this, saying she regretted any misunderstandings. But there is uh, some contrast between the quick and forceful action of the Israelis, which everybody agrees the situation would have been a lot worse without them. Uh, was the U.S. slow out of the gate here, and if so, why? Um, first of all, let me uh, compliment the work of the Israelis. Uh, uh, Minister Mordecai called Secretary Cohen to offer him condolences, and um, uh, he off also offered him help, specifically asked if he would uh, uh, like, uh, if, if it would be useful for the Israelis to send a team of people experienced in dealing with rubble and uh, extracting bodies and, uh, and we hope, living people. Uh, and Secretary Cohen readily accepted that offer. Uh, second, um, I think we responded very quickly to this. As I said, we flew 17 uh, uh, missions uh, right away. Uh, we had uh, uh, medical people on the ground relatively quickly. 
We had a number of uh, support activities. Remember, Africa is not really uh, close to uh, Europe or close to uh, Andrews Air Force Base. We put together teams of people within hours of the uh, disaster and had uh, not only new security teams on the way, but medical uh, teams on the way. We had uh, um, 64 uh, uh, civilian uh, rescue experts from Fairfax County shipped over there. We had dogs shipped over there. We had over 200 units of blood shipped there rel rel relatively quickly. Uh, so I don't, um, I, I don't buy that um, uh, allegation that we didn't respond quickly enough. Not the criminal, but the, the rescue team from Alexandria uh, claims it sat on the ground cooling its heels for 17 hours because the Air Force couldn't come up with an airplane. The first Mercy flight out of Ramstein, the C-141, did not get off the ground until 13 and a half hours after the bombing, did not arrive in Nairobi until 26 afterwards, 26 hours. If you call 911 and you don't get an ambulance for 26 hours, I subscribe you're in trouble. How is that a fast response? I think we had uh, planes leaving from Andrews Air Force Base at around uh, 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 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, we had to assemble teams. We had to uh, make sure we had the right people. We had to get the FBI people on board. And I submit to you that um, in the life of uh, press people, this may seem like a long period of time, but in terms of putting together a complex team of experts, I think we operated uh, relatively quickly here. It's not a, a field hospital or something related, all uh, containerized, uh, supposedly We do have containerized equipment, but one of the issues here was assembling more blood. Um, we realized immediately that we needed special um, expertise in surgery and that we needed um, uh, augmentation of blood supplies. So it took a little bit of time to put those together. Yes. Um, there's been uh, reports that there were uh, several uh, incidents foiled against uh, embassies uh, in the past. Uh, is there any way that you can discuss any similar uh, incidents uh, revolving uh, military bases at all? Well, <laughs> look, um, uh, Ambassador Pickering said last week that, um, that 30,000 threats a year are received against uh, U.S. diplomatic installations around the world. And all these threats are, uh, are uh, taken seriously, they're processed, they're considered, uh, they're analyzed. Uh, we receive thousands of threats every year about um, uh, U.S. military personnel and um, uh, U.S. military installations. It is the nature of intelligence and the nature of security that failures are public and successes are private. Uh, so I cannot go into uh, detailed accounts of threats that we foiled. I can tell you that uh, during a period of time when uh, um, everybody uh, realizes that terrorism has become a greater threat, that's over the last decade or so, that the uh, number of um, attacks against U.S. military and diplomatic personnel has declined quite dramatically. Um, there were 200 attacks against military and diplomatic personnel in 1986. There were eight in 1987, 1997, excuse me. So over um, approximately 10 year period, there's been a rather dramatic decline and it was a steady decline. This is not just a matter of good luck. It's a matter of increased intention, attention to security, increased attention to intelligence, and increased, increased vigilance on the part of soldiers and diplomats all over the world. I might point out that um, uh, if you look at casualties um, uh, uh, suffered by Americans in 1997, uh, far more were suffered, most, the majority were suffered by, uh, by American uh, business personnel rather than by American diplomats or American soldiers. Now, this is, I, I don't cite that um, for any other reason but to point out that Americans are vulnerable all around the world, and I think that all Americans, public, those who work for the government and private, those who don't, are paying more attention to security. It's not um, always a benign world out there, and uh, I think all Americans are working much harder to protect themselves. I'm sorry, what casualty numbers are you referring to? I was referring to uh, um, uh, casualties um, uh, suffered in attacks against Americans in 1997. There were 126 casualties in 1997, 104 of them were uh, business people.
Ken, when Secretary Cohen received the offer of aid from uh, Minister Mordecai, uh, did he check with uh, Secretary Albright, or was that not necessary as far as he was concerned? Secretary Albright was then um, in the process of coming back from Rome. I assume he checked immediately with the joint staff, which at that point was coordinating the requests for, for uh, assistance, and uh, decided that uh, this assistance would be helpful. So we accepted it. Mr. Lambros. Uh, could you please tell us more about the official who will replace Mr. Lodal, and if he's going to get involved extensively with the Greek-Turkish affairs too, as Mr. Lodal here at the Pentagon? Um, uh, Mr. Lodal uh, will be replaced by James Bodner. Um, he has been nominated for the job uh, by the White House, I think, about two weeks ago. He is yet to uh, be confirmed by the Senate, but he hope he, we hope he will be confirmed by the Senate relatively soon. Uh, Mr. Lodel uh, told Secretary Cohen that he would remain in, in the, that he wanted to return to private business, but that he would remain in the job until a transition could take place, and we anticipate that transition will take place soon. Mr. Bodner is currently a special assistant to uh, uh, Secretary Cohen. He has worked for him since uh, 1983. Uh, when he went to work for uh, Senator Cohen, then Senator Cohen, and he specializes in, uh, in national security affairs and foreign policy. I do not know whether he will uh, pay particular attention to the Greek-Turkey account, as Mr. Lodl has. I suspect that will have to be sorted out between Mr. Bodner and, uh, and Walter Slocum, who's the Under Secretary of Defense for Policy. According to reports, with your involvement, the two sides in Cyprus are almost ready to reach an agreement on moratorium over the airspace of the island. Do you have anything on that? I'm afraid I don't. And on the upcoming military exercise... I hope it's true, but I don't have any facts on it. Okay. On the upcoming military exercise in Firon and Albania, are you planning to use also your installations in Greece? Uh, my understanding is we do not plan to use our installations in Greece for that exercise just because they're too far away. And the last one, anything on the consistent reports for U.S. military involvement in Kosovo? Um, well, first of all, uh, our goal in Kosovo was to reach a diplomatic solution to the problem. I think we've been very clear about that from the very beginning. Um, second, um, if there is any military um, uh, uh, involvement in Kosovo, it will be done through NATO not unilaterally by the United States. Yes, Pat. Uh, Secretary Cohen has threatened uh, a very uh, harsh response to anyone that's found responsible for these bombings. Uh, but we still don't know who did the Kobar Towers, is that right? No, that is correct. How can uh, the American public expect a vigorous response from this administration? If, what is it, four years later, we still don't know who uh, attacked those bases there? Well, first of all, it's two years. And second, um, well, it has been a long time, and no one is more frustrated about that than Secretary Cohen is or President Clinton, who has also promised a vigorous response and did so after the Kobar Towers bombing case. These are very complex cases. They require a lot of intelligence work and investigative work, and that work is continuing. I think it's very clear from uh, uh, the amount of time we spent successfully tracking down the people responsible for the uh, World Trade Center bombing, uh, the amount of time we spent uh, tracking down the, uh, uh, the person who uh, shot people outside of the CIA, that we're serious about uh, locating these uh, terrorists and bringing them to justice. We have done so in a number of cases, two of which I've just mentioned. Uh, we cannot expect instant responses in these cases, but as Secretary Cohen pointed out, there is no statute of limitations for terrorists, and uh, we will uh, work long and hard in order to find them. And when we do, we will uh, take the appropriate response. Yes. Different subject. Um, I understand that Linda Tripp has formally communicated with the Pentagon in some fashion um, and asked to State her, she's stating her intention that she wants to come back to work here. Uh, is she expected back? When? And is there any impediment on the Pentagon side from her returning to the job she held before she went on this FlexiPlace program? 
Um, I have nothing to uh, add to what uh, Captain Doubleday said about those same questions several weeks ago. Is there another question? Yes. Well, he said he might have something soon. So he he's not here. Not <laughs> he doesn't. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Do you have a well, question? Well, excuse me, though. You would still, though, be in charge of Linda Tripp's position. Is that correct? I'm. I'm not in charge of this issue. I've recused myself from dealing with this so issue. Who can we ask so these who questions would be? Of? Uh, there will be nothing to say on this um, until we've had a chance to review the current situation. That review is ongoing, and as I say, there's nothing to add to what Captain Doubleday said but several weeks ago. I just wanted to ask, you say you're not able to answer questions on this, so right. who, um, who is the appropriate person to even put a question to then? Um, uh, the appropriate person will be, probably be Captain Doubleday when he returns. Yes. Uh, there is a strike going on uh, by the Turkish employees at Inserlik Air Base. Uh, we've been getting reports that all of, virtually all of the facilities on base are shut down, uh, including places to get food, that people are living off of MREs, that baby formula is not available, that diapers are not available, that it has excuse me, become dangerous to go off base, that people are uh, ordered to only go off in groups, that at least one person was beaten off base apparently by strikers. Um, do you have a handle on the situation there and what is the Defense Department or the State Department or the U.S. government doing to deal with that situation? Well, you're right. There is a strike by approximately uh, 1,400 Turkish employees. Uh, that strike has been going on now for, I think, um, 18 or 19 days. Uh, we are negotiating uh, in an effort to resolve the dispute uh, with the Turkish employees. In the meantime, a number of civilian services provided by the uh, Turkish workers at the base have been interrupted. We have responded to that by setting up field kitchens and other ways to uh, feed the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, military community at, at Inselik. It is a Turkish air base, as you know, where we operate with uh, uh, the Turkish Air Force. There are approximately uh, 5,300 Americans on the air base. Uh, I think uh, 2,200 um, uh, members of the Air Force are service members, and then the rest are dependents. Uh, we are uh, doing several things. The first is we're uh, doing our best to protect the security and the safety of the Americans uh, on the air base. Um, second, we are doing our best to uh, keep them supplied. And uh, that has been difficult because of the strike, but we are um, uh, bringing in food and other necessary supplies. And the third thing we're doing is negotiating with the Turkish labor unions to try to resolve the strike. And um, those negotiations are now ongoing. Are people living off of MREs on the base? Uh, uh, there was a period of time when people were living on MREs, but we have now set up field kitchens. And my understanding is that most, if not all, the people should be getting uh, hot meals from field kitchens now. But, um, so we're talking about tents? Well, I don't know whether they're being uh, prepared and served in tents or in buildings. There are plenty of buildings that insulate. Uh, so I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know specifically whether they're being flown in or taken by train, but they're being brought in, yes. Do you have a handle on what facilities are operating on the base versus what facilities are not? I'm afraid they do not, no. Many facilities have been shut down, including uh, uh, recreational centers. Uh, but um, we've been able to operate uh, Northern Watch uh, during this uh, whole dispute. Our military operations have not uh, suffered at all. Uh, there have been several earthquakes over the last month, and uh, American military people have helped uh, where appropriate in, uh, in dealing with the earthquakes. So the basic. Um, operations and mission of our force at Insulik goes on. Um, the, uh, the Americans are carrying these out under difficult circumstances. We're trying to do our very best to, uh, to resolve the, uh, the problem. And as for the reports of people being beaten off base by uh, groups of strikers? There was uh, one um, uh, uh, American NCO uh, attacked in a parking lot outside a store, as I understand it. And he has filed uh, charges uh, with the Turkish police against the people who attacked him. And now people are only allowed to leave 
traffic facing groups, is that correct? That is part of the, uh, our, our effort to maintain safety and security is to have people travel only in groups off the base. You know what the demands of the strikers are? I'm told that they're asking for a 450% increase in pay plus medical and retirement benefits plus, plus, plus. They're asking for, uh, uh, for uh, many things, and that's what's being negotiated now. I don't know the specifics of what they're requesting. Do we have any personnel uh, who are living off base that have had to move on onto the? Uh, I'm base? afraid I don't know the answer to that. We can try to find out. I, I believe that most of the there's a fairly extensive housing on the base, and I believe most of the people live on the base. But whether all live on the base, I can't be sure. Yes. Is there any consideration being given to allow the uh, uh, um, civilians or the uh, dependents to go home for the time being? given the difficulties there? Well, new dependents who were uh, uh, on the uh, verge of being shipped over there have not gone. And, uh, I, uh, and I suppose some of the dependents have come home for leave or uh, uh, summer vacation or to get ready to go to college or whatever. Uh, but I don't uh, know yet. Uh, no decision has been made to ship back dependents at this stage. And what's yes. the status of the security situation? Have they augmented security or added additional security people to the base? Um, I don't know whether they've augmented uh, the security forces with new people, but certainly security has been one of the primary concerns. And uh, you pointed out one of the actions that's been taken by the Air Force uh, uh, to protect people, and that is to uh, uh, make sure that they travel in groups. Have there been any problems uh, between our people there and the Turkish military people in the that My, my understanding is that there have not been such problems, that they work well together. Is there any, any prospect of this being resolved um, anytime soon? Who, and who's doing the negotiating? Uh, well, the negotiating is being done by a team out of, uh, out of UCOM, as I understand it. General Jumper's been down there. And, uh, and reviewed the situation. And there's, uh, I think, negotiating's been going on since at least August 6th, and maybe before that. But the negotiating continues, and we're hopeful that we'll reach a, a, an acceptable settlement. Yes, Jim. Jim. Two, uh, two quick ones. Uh, serious floods in uh, South Korea. Have U.S. Uh, troops in, in South Korea, have they uh, aided, done anything to, to help out, or have they been the victims of these floods? Well, I assume since many of the floods have been around Seoul, uh, that we've been affected by them. Uh, the American military in Seoul lives on a hill, uh, so I assume the water's running down from where they live. But um, uh, I'll get an answer to uh, what, what assistance we've provided. I'm sure we've been working with the South Korean military to help them. We'll get an answer to you on that. Yes, Pat. Uh, we know the Lockheed Martin's uh, theater missile program has been pretty much of a disaster. But uh, I, are they charging us now $1 billion more than the negotiated uh, contract? Have they got a billion dollar overrun in this program? Um, no, that, that's not entirely true. There is a big uh, cost overrun. My understanding is that the, uh, uh, the overrun is uh, $732 million so far, and that largely results from the delays, reflects the delays in the program, that obviously a, a program uh, delayed is a program that becomes more costly. Is this cost plus? Um, they do, it is a cost plus program. They do not receive any fee. It's a cost plus fee program, cost plus fixed fee. They receive no fee, as I understand it, on, uh, on cost increases caused by delay. In addition, um, we have uh, uh, changed the requirements of the program to a certain extent, and that has, uh, has created another $265 million in cost increases. So the combination of the delay plus the uh, enhanced uh, DOD requirements has generated about a billion dollars in increased cost. For nothing, though, right? We've got nothing out of this. So we've got a yeah. string of disasters. So far, that's true. Um, we have not been able to hit the target. Um, we do have um, a, uh, a number of successful components of the program. One is the radar system, which works very well. 
as you know, because we've been through this many times here, and I don't have to go through a lengthy repetition of all of this, but there have been five failures, and each failure has been uh, attributed to a different cause. Um, so it, it has made it difficult to uh, trace down and, uh, and fix the, uh, the failures. But both the program managers and the uh, contractor are determined to make it work. Is there any increased consideration of finding a second uh, supplier for this um, program? Right now, my understanding is that uh, we are working uh, uh, aggressively with Lockheed to try to make the program work. A second uh, supplier is always a possibility, but one of the uh, problems we have right now is that there has been a substantial amount of investment in the program, and there's a reluctance to start from scratch with another supplier. What were the changes that resulted? What did you say, 275 uh, million? 265 uh, million dollars. And I do not know um, what those requ new requirements are, but we will find out. Will you find out and let us know? About yes, that? we will. Dale. Um, you, you talk about uh, forces that DOD has sent to East Africa. Uh, are there additional forces on the way, or is there a plan to send any additional forces uh, to that area to assist in the investigation or to provide security for the people who are already there? Uh, my understanding is not right now. Um, we have sent in fairly substantial uh, security enhancement, 100 Marines. Uh, we'll obviously play it by ear and respond to the requests we get from the State Department, but my understanding is right now we have enough people on the spot. We've been concentrating, of course, primarily on first uh, uh, finding people who are still alive, that's largely over, um, uh, taking care of the injured and evacuating those who need to be evacuated, and of course um, uh, gather that that's a question that should go to the White House since he sent the letter. Yes, Suzanne. Uh, just a point of clarification, can you say why you recuse yourself from the Linda Tripp matter, and was that dealing with the DOD legal advice or private legal advice for some reason? Um, I just felt that given some of the, uh, uh, the charges the press has raised about me that it would be better for me to recuse myself, so that's what I've done. Yes? Uh, a new study coming out of the University of Texas, uh, medical researchers there who are printing the study in the American Journal of Epidemiology this month um, are challenging government studies performed about Gulf War syndrome, and among other things, the study says that the government's, government's methodology was flawed and that government and that uh, Gulf War vets were far more likely to die and be hospitalized than the general public. I'm wondering if you know about this report and what the reaction is by the Department of Defense. Well, I have um, uh, looked at the report uh, briefly and um, uh, basically, from the best I can tell, uh, the, re the report, which is by uh, Dr. Robert Haley, um, is based on a fairly uh, complex uh, statistical analysis. Uh, other epidemiologists challenge his, uh, his methods and also challenge his conclusions. We have asked the RAND Corporation to review these, completing, these competing uh, statistical uh, interpretations of the data uh, and uh, the conclusions that flow from them. That's all I can tell you about that. I mean, it's, uh, you know, there were a set of reports in the New England Journal of Medicine, I believe, or the Journal of the American Medical Association last year that focused on mortality, hospitalization, and birth defects. Doctor, uh, They were done by epidemiologists who, of course, study figures and try to deduce patterns. Um, Dr. Uh, Haley has uh, uh, reviewed those reports and decided that there were statistical imperfections in the way they were done. Uh, the authors of those reports dispute Dr. Haley's findings, and those disputes are carried in segments called counterpoints um, in the American Journal of Epidemiology. Um, you've probably read those. Um, the uh, doctors who did the initial study do not believe that Dr. Haley's interpretation is correct, so we've uh, hired the RAND Corporation to, uh, to look at these uh, competing claims and to try to advise us on what's correct. In the meantime, um, we continue to work aggressively to find out uh, what caused Gulf War illnesses. We financed, I believe, 121 research projects, including one by Dr. Haley himself, 
and uh, those uh, uh, medical research projects are underway. And we are also concentrating on trying to make sure that people who were suffering from uh, illnesses attributable to the Gulf War get the best possible care they can. If the RAND Corporation does find some validity to Dr. Haley's criticisms, what kind of action might you take then? Well, I think that's a hypothetical question. We'll just have to figure out. Uh, we'll have to wait until the result comes out. Um, all we're looking at here is uh, one set of, uh, of studies on, on hospitalization, mortality, and birth defects. And uh, um, uh, these are very important findings, but we'll just have to wait and see how the RAND Corporation sorts them out. There may be other statistical methods uh, available that, that uh, scientists haven't used yet in trying to, uh, trying to figure out these results found that Gulf War veterans were 50 percent more likely to die in car crashes than the general public? That's what the initial study found um, that uh, was published last year, as I recall. Yes. Uh, Jim? Approximately how long will it be until the RAND study is available? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. Anybody who's had – this stuff is uh, literally all Greek to me. It's the, the formulas are filled with sigmas and deltas and psi's and other things. and. Uh, um, I, I don't know how long it'll take the RAND Corporation to sort this out. Joe. I'd like to return to the uh, embassy bombings for uh, one last question from my point of view. Uh, we've heard a lot from the President uh, and the Secretary of State uh, as to improving security or taking a look at security at embassies uh, around the world and that uh, appropriate actions would be taken if necessary. Where are we along those lines in studying the amount of security we have at U.S. embassies, and are we, are we close to seeing anything changing from present uh, methods? Well, first of all, this happened on Friday. Today's Tuesday. Um, I'm sure the State Department is looking at its requirements all around the world, but as I explained earlier, the initial burst of energy here has been spent on figuring out uh, how to help the people in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam and uh, dealing with the, uh, the uh, large human disaster there. Uh, second, um, the State Department, the FBI, and other investigators, the intelligence agencies, have focused on trying to figure out who did this and to preserve as many of the clues, the early clues, as possible and to work with uh, other intelligence agencies to, to begin to piece together how this happened and who is, who is responsible for it. Um, the State Department has spent uh, approximately a billion dollars uh, since uh, 1986 improving the security of its embassies. They have constructed 27 new embassies that are, according to the so-called Inman standards, that um, I suppose to most uh, uh, Americans would look fortress-like. They're surrounded by nine-foot walls. They're uh, typically uh, uh, far away from streets. They have uh, big security perimeters, and they look sort of like uh, uh, like fortresses inside. Um, you've probably seen these in places like, um, uh, uh, well, Caracas, Venezuela is where one exists. Um, uh, there's another one in, in uh, Muscat, Oman. Uh, there are 27 of them. In addition, they have uh, they have uh, spent a lot of money to improve security at existing embassies rather than build new ones to improve security at existing embassies. Um, as State Department officials said on Friday, and they have said since, and they will probably say again today when they have another briefing on this, um, they are now looking at ways to uh, improve the security of, of embassies all around the world. I don't know where they stand on that. I can tell you from the military standpoint that right after this um, tragedy occurred, um, uh, General Shelton, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, sent a, uh, uh, a message out to all of the, uh, the ten commanders in chief, the area commanders in chief around the world, uh, asking them to review their security and to uh, make any necessary changes um, in light of the, uh, the Terrorist Act in Africa. And uh, so the SINCs have, as they do on a day-to-day -day basis, reviewed uh, uh, their security posture in light of the threats they're receiving and events taking place in other parts of the world and made whatever changes were appropriate. Yes, Chris. The Air Force grounded the fleet of B-2s the other day. 
Um, is there any fix at this point as to how long this grounding may last? Or uh, well, first of all, my understanding was that they were uh, fixing a, uh, a a specific problem, and that as that problem was uh, either checked and found out, it, it, I mean, in some cases it might not have to be fixed. They were going to look at each one of these uh, planes and what they're uh, 48 of them, I guess. Um, no, no, 20. 18, 16, something, I don't know how many have been built. Um, uh, they will, uh, uh, they will. They asked the Air Force and the ACC and the Whiteman Air Force Base where they keep them, how many they had, and I'm still waiting for an answer. <laughs> they put out something today that some are flying. That was a couple days ago. Well, they're less than 20. They're stealthy, so they're hard to count. Um, at any rate, as soon as they uh, as soon as they determine whether a repair is necessary, and if so, if they fix it, the planes will go back into uh, so into 48, flying. Forty-eight stealth bombers. No, no, no. no. They're, they're, <laughs> I can't remember how many are built. Um, uh, they're I mean they're supposed to be twenty, right? And uh, I can't remember uh, how many of those have actually been built yet. So we expect that they'll come back online one at a time, and we won't have a fix on what the cost will uh, will be for quite some time. Well, I think that that's a very good question for you to ask the Air Force. But my understanding is they will come back one at a time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian. Quick question: Any any movement on a new Air Force Secretary nominee? Not that I'm aware of. Is, is that something you don't expect will happen until? Next year, I mean, obviously, Congress doesn't have very much. Well, I don't time. really know what to expect. Um, uh, there isn't much time left uh, to uh, nominate and confirm somebody. Uh, obviously, we'd like to fill that vacancy as soon as possible, but I, I just can't make a uh, make a prediction for you. Well, in the same line, how about the Navy Secretary? There's understanding that there's a nominee selected, but his name hasn't gone to the Hill yet. Oh, this just in: B twos are okay. Um, do you have any uh, expatiation on that? They're all flying. They're all flying. They're all, really, all at once. So whatever the, uh, do we know how many are flying? Both my <laughs> math. <laughs> the crisis is over. Okay. I'm sorry. What were you asking me? When is that nomination going out? I don't know the answer to that question either. It should go up relatively soon. Yes. East Africa, when the bombings occurred, I believe there was a JSET team that was waiting to leave Rwanda. Yes. Were they deployed down to Dar es Salaam or somewhere? They were going to be deployed to Dar es Salaam to enhance security there, but in fact they weren't because we moved in some uh, Marine fleet anti-terrorist teams, and uh, the JSET has returned to its home in Yukon. Yes. Are you looking at uh, migrating any of the uh, uh, technology that was uh, used after the Cobar uh, bombing, because TRW had a contract for uh, sensor equipment. Is there any possible migration of uh, that kind of sensor equipment to, to well, the... That's uh, a good uh, question, and uh, that's something the State Department will have to answer. Obviously, the State Department has to rebuild these embassies, and presumably will it's up for them to comment on, but I, I doubt if they'll rebuild the Nairobi embassy in exactly the same place. But this is one of the decisions they have to make over the next few weeks or months. Thank you. You're welcome.